Okay, this is the last section for chapter three. Um, looking at the macromolecules, and we'll be covering lipids. So we've done proteins, carbohydrates, now we'll look at lipids. All right, so lipids are a little bit different than proteins or carbohydrates. One of the main differences, uh, well, there are two main differences. One is that they're hydrophobic, so they're not soluble in water. So lipids, generally you think of kind of um, fats and oils, and you know they don't dissolve in water, so hydrophobic, right, water-fearing. Uh, they have lots of nonpolar covalent bonds, just of carbon and hydrogen linked together. And so they aggregate away from water. They have lots of important functions, though. So um, beyond just thinking of fat as energy storage, there's lots of important functions for lipids. So we have energy storage, yeah, in fats and oils. But also our cell membranes are made out of lipids called phospholipids. Um, they're pigments that capture light called carotenoids. Also hormones and vitamins, uh, including steroids, also steroids, are modified, um, are, are lipids. They provide thermal insulation, you know, protection, uh, maintaining our body temperature by giving us uh, insulation. They also insulate nerves, kind of like um, wires have coatings around them to prevent them from shorting out. And they also provide water repellency in drying in the form of waxes and oils. Okay, the first group of lipids we'll talk about are called triglycerides, and tri means three, and so we're talking about three fatty acids attached to one glycerol. So at the top here, here's a glycerol, there's three fatty acids below it. Uh, triglycerides are at energy storage, and um, if you look at these long chains, these are nonpolar, it's all hydrogen and carbon. Okay, so these are um, nonpolar, hydrophobic, Okay. This glycerol attaches to these three fatty acids through a type of bond called an ester linkage. Okay. And this is formed through a condensation reaction because we're synthesizing something. One type of um, fatty acid, okay, one of these components that make up the triglycerol, these fatty acids, they can be saturated or unsaturated. So the saturated ones, they're completely filled up with hydrogen. They're saturated with hydrogen. So if you look at every single carbon, in one of these fatty acids, they have as many hydrogens as they can hold. So if we zoom in right here on this carbon, it has it's bound to one carbon above it, one carbon below it, and it's also bound to two hydrogens. So that's the max number of bonds that carbon can perform. We know carbon can covalently bond to four other can make four covalent bonds. All right, so it's completely saturated. The thing about saturated um, fatty acids is that the fatty acids are fairly straight. And they're also solid at room temperature. Saturated fatty acids are also um, mostly animal fats. Okay, so I said an example like um, bacon. The fat on the bacon is solid when you heat it up; it melts. But when that pan that you cook the bacon in returns to room temperature, what happens to that oil, that bacon fat? It it solidifies again. Okay, so here's these are fatty acids that are saturated, completely filled with hydrogen. And they're solid because they can pack closely together. Then the other type is unsaturated fatty acids. These are not completely filled with hydrogen. So if we look at this fatty acid in the diagram, if you zoom in here and there's a carbon, it only bound to one hydrogen instead of two. So it's missing one of the hydrogens. It compensates for this by forming a double bond so that carbon still is making four bonds. But as a consequence, you have a bend in this fatty acid. Right, this gives it a unique property. Okay, so these unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature, and these are things like oils, okay, olive oil or vegetable oil. And so these uh, unsaturated fats you'll find more often from plants. So when we look at one of these fatty acids, it's bent. So it, this kink prevents these uh, unsaturated fatty acids from pushing against each other. So it keeps them liquid at room temperature. Another important type of lipid are phospholipids. These are what make up our plasma membranes. And every single cell of our body has a plasma membrane, so we have lots and lots of phospholipids. The unique property of phospholipids is that they have a portion that's hydrophobic and a portion that's hydrophilic. Okay, when a molecule has both of these features, it's called amphipathic, if you see at the top of the slide here. So if we look at the top group, the top portion of a phospholipid, it has charges. There's a negative charge here, there's a positive charge up here, and this is the hydrophilic head. 
It likes water, it has charges, water has charges, like things, like, like things, okay? Then the tail is called the hydrophobic tail. If you zoom in on it, you see it's these fatty acids. We just said fatty acids are nonpolar, they're mostly carbon and hydrogen. So you put those together, hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tail, we have a phospholipid. Phospholipids are important because they form a plasma membranes, and this is called a phospholipid bilayer, phospholipid bilayer there's two layers of phospholipids. And this is what a plasma membrane looks like. The outside of a cell has water, the inside of a cell has cytoplasm, which is mostly water. So these phospholipids arrange themselves so that their hydrophilic heads on the outside are near the water, because the hydrophilic heads like water, and water's on the outside. On the inside of the cell, there's water, so again, the hydrophilic heads line up with the water. Both of these layers, though, they orientate their fatty acid tails near each other, away from the water. So the inside of a plasma membrane is hydrophobic. It does not like water. Okay, so these um, phospholipids naturally take this orientation so that their hydrophobic tails stay away from the water and their hydrophilic heads, which like water, align with the water. Okay, so those are the phospholipids. The next category of lipids are the carotenoids. These are light absorbing pigments. Okay, an example is beta carotene. You've heard of beta carotene, maybe from uh, carrots, and give it the orange coloration. In animals that eat beta carotene, uh, the beta carotene is broken down into vitamin A. Okay, and vitamin A, beta carotene, these are examples of lipids. Um, vitamins are important in general because they're considered coenzymes. That means they help our enzymes work and work properly. Okay, another group of um, lipids are the steroids. Okay, these are compounds that, almost well, steroids are signaling molecules, but in general, this class of lipids we'll talk about here, they all share a common ring structure. Okay, so this includes cholesterol, which is an important part of cell membranes, and it's a substrate for creating uh, hormones like testosterone and estrogen and also vitamins and other uh, steroid hormones. So here's a picture of cholesterol. You see one, two, three, four rings is the backbone. And then you can modify the um, parts that stick out and you get the different types of molecules. Next up are vitamins. And uh, we mentioned vitamins are uh, small molecules not synthesized by the body. Well, except for vitamin D, which can be synthesized. And we get them from our food. Vitamins also act as coenzymes, cofactors, to help carry out important chemical reactions. Okay, so if we look at these um, lipids on the screen here, there's four structures. Okay, then we have cholesterol, it's made out of four rings. Vitamin D has a similar four ring structure. Uh, cortisol, testosterone, they all are based out of that same uh, four ring structure. The last class of lipids we'll talk about then are waxes. These are also, they're nonpolar. We said lipids are nonpolar. And if you think about wax, maybe wax on a leaf like we see in the picture or, or wax on feathers like on a duck, you know the water beads up on these surfaces and lipids are nonpolar. So it makes sense that waxes would be lipids or nonpolar. Okay, so they help repel water. All right, so that's all the lipids. Um, it's kind of a quick overview, but they're important. They're an important class of molecules and they have a wide range of functions. So here's a list of their significance. Remember we had triglycerides, uh, we had fatty acids, uh, we talked about phospholipids, important plasma membranes, carotenoids, steroids, cholesterols, and waxes. So you wanna know these molecules, you wanna know why they're important and their general functions inside the cell. So that kinda is, that's the end of chapter three. There's still one macromolecule we haven't talked about and that's the nucleic acids and that's where chapter four picks up.